So if you don't know how to put a legal entity together, you need to be speaking to your lawyer that you have on your credibility kit or your CPA or tax expert uh, that you have, especially if you haven't done it before, you definitely want to have the right people that you're talking to. But the structure pillar requires number one, choosing the right entity. Okay. Now, when I say entity, here's what I want you to focus on. Not a LLC, S corp, C corp, or partnership. I'm not talking about that type of legal structure entity. I'm talking about the concept behind the entity. So even if it's a S corp, a C corp, whether it's a, if it's a partnership or LLC, when I say choose the right entity, I'm focusing on the concept. What kind of concept does my entity need to be structured around? My personal recommendation is that your entity is structured around the holding company concept. Now this is very important because when you don't structure your entity, whether it's a C corp, a S corp, a LLC or a partnership, I ain't talking about no sole proprietorship. If you just went to city hall, got you a business license and now it's me, Ramon Preston doing business as uh, our pre, pre enterprises that, that you, it, that's just you, that ain't no entity. If something happens, God forbid, uh, you get sued or something, you liable personally. So you need to have a real legitimate legal entity. But my point is when you choosing it, right, the choosing the entity, I want it to be structured around the holding company concept. That's very, very important for you to structure it around the holding company concept. Why do I want to structure my business around uh, the holding company concept? Here's why, because your holding company concept is more of an organizational enterprise. Okay. So even if you got the name enterprise, like I got Ramon Preston enterprises, it don't mean it's an enterprise cause you got the name enterprises. It's just like somebody got the word ministries international and ain't never been out the country. Don't mean you international. It don't mean you got ministries plural. So when we talk about the holding company, This concept is about organizational enterprise. And I'll explain, explain it in a minute. Enterprise. All right. So what am I talking about? This is going to be your parent company. This is going to be your umbrella. So let's just say, for example, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to feel me on this. Let's say you, 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 uh, cut hair, right? You cut hair. Or let's say you cut grass. Or let's say you know how to paint houses, right? Or let's say you sell shirts and shoes. I'm just trying to show you how this organizational enterprise works. If you do one of these things, let's say you just real good at it and you center your whole business around selling shirts and shoes. Well, now this is going to become your ceiling. This is why a lot of entrepreneurs who get in the business get bored and they get discouraged because they tried to build an entire organization around one product, one service, one idea, as opposed to creating an organizational enterprise using a holding company concept. Now this could have been their first product, but they also had other services, other products that they wanted, and it could have all been done under one organizational enterprise. Now what happens is you open yourself up to greater possibilities because as I said, most entrepreneurs and business owners don't just have one idea. They want to sell shirts. They want to sell shoes. They want to, uh, create a, a, a clothing line with suits and, and underwear, it don't matter. They want to sell hats. Uh, they want to license certain uh, ideas that they have. They want to build an app. I'm not saying all of them going to work, but what I am saying is instead of me having a haircut business, a grass cutting business, a painting service business and a shirt and shoe business, I'm going to just create a holding company concept or organizational enterprise that gives me the leverage 
and the luxury of having one big umbrella. And then when I have one big umbrella, guess what happens? I'm going to create what we call divisions. So now I'm going to have my clothing division. I'm going to have my shoe division. I'm going to have uh, my hospitality division. I'm going to have my maintenance division. I'm going to have my educational training division. I'm going to have my concert division. I'm going to have my production division. I'm going to have a hundred divisions under this one organizational enterprise. So in the event that it doesn't work, it's still under the same umbrella or in the event that it does work, guess what happened? That division grows up. Because came up with some product to grow hair fast and this product just took off. So now this organizational enterprise owns what was a division and now it's a subsidiary. It's owned by my enterprise. Guess what that does to my organizational enterprise? If I got five or 10 different divisions that at some point become their own companies, their own entities, but they're all owned. Guess what that does to my organizational enterprise? It gives my organizational enterprise more purchasing power. This is how you see big companies swallow up smaller companies because they have organizational enterprises and now they got more purchasing power. They got more room to grow. Uh, you see Amazon doing it. They have so many different divisions. They ain't just selling books no more. They ain't just uh, doing movies no more through prime. They, they getting into food. They bought out whole foods. You, you see, uh, Walton enterprises doing it through Sam's and through, through Walmart stores. So now they're getting into banking. They, they, they got other divisions that they created that took off that became subsidiary. So when you think of, uh, the first aspect of the structure pillar, the first aspect is about you choosing the right entity. And my personal recommendation is when you choosing the right entity is based on a holding company concept. And you might be saying, Ramon, this is just too complicated, man. Like I just want to go to city hall and I just want to get me a, a business license. No, you don't because you thinking small, you got to expand your things. You got to go back to the first pillar, which is the setup pillar. You have to create a company legacy and a company philosophy. You got to change your views and your values. You got to change your think. You got to change your goals. They're too small. They ain't going to be enough for you to eat. You want you to eat. You want your spouse to eat. You want your kids to eat. You want your in-laws to eat. You want your nieces and nephews to eat. See, I'm creating something so big uh, that I want to make sure that Anybody in my family that want to work for me or with me in my organization will be able to. My son, when he got at the end of school and he realized, you know what? I, first thing he said, uh, Pops, I want to be with the family business. Guess what? I was in a position because I created an organization and enterprise. I was in a position to say, come on, you ain't got to go to college then. Your college is going to be OJT. You're going to learn from the best. You're going to learn from your boy. And I'm going to show you the game. This is your legacy right here. And we're going to create a, a, a division uh, in our enterprise that's going to be focusing on what you know you're amazing at, which is why he the cameraman uh, behind the camera. He's the social media manager. He's doing his thing. He's making it happen. But guess what? He's building, he's building an entire division which at some point will be a subsidiary under the organizational enterprise booming and banging because we making it happen. So what you need to do is click that link. If what you hearing in this boardroom talk is providing any value to you, if it ain't doing nothing else, just send me a shout out. And let me know that it's helping you is motivating you is giving you what you need to help you get to your next level. But I want to make sure that you get the information. You click the link, join one of our memberships. You're going to have access to all of what I'm sharing with you and much, much more documents, forms, everything you need from A to Z to take your business to the next level. So thank you for joining Boardroom Talk. Until next time, it's your boy, we out.